And you know what they did? They laughed at us. Now, the obvious candidate to look to was Blockbuster. Now, in 2000, Blockbuster was on a very different trajectory. Blockbuster had $6 billion in revenue. They had 6,000 stores. They had 90,000 employees. So Netflix was nothing to them. And despite our calls and our emails, we could not get them to even say a word to us. Until, a few months later, we were on a corporate retreat. And we were in a little town called Solvang, California. Now, we're pretty casual to begin with in Silicon Valley. And on retreat, even so much more so. I think I had packed total one pair of flip-flops, two pairs of shorts, and some tank top t-shirts. My partner, Reed Hastings, his gesture to dressing up was he had a Hawaiian shirt. And wouldn't you know it, this is when Blockbuster calls and said, we will see you now. So here we were in Solvang, and they wanted us in Dallas the next morning. So what do we do? Well, we actually had to lease a private jet, which to me was this unbelievable luxury. And a little bit of Netflix trivia, the private jet was owned by Vanna White. And we all piled on the jet, and we flew to Dallas, and we got in a cab, went to the Renaissance Tower, up to the 35th or 36th story, got into, put into a conference room, which seemed to me to be the size of this room. And I'm there, of course, in my shorts and my flip-flops and my t-shirt, and Reed's in his Hawaiian shirt, and in come the Blockbuster guys. And they have their fancy suits and their $1,000 shoes. And we sit down and we tell them what we want to do. We say, wouldn't it be great if you purchased us, and then we will run the online part of the business, you guys can run the stores. We have a perfect synergy. And they nodded in all the right places. And they finally said, so how much do you think we should pay for you? So Reed screwed up all of his courage. And he said, $50 million? And you know what they did? They laughed at us. And the meeting went downhill pretty quickly after that. And what I remember most, though, from that day was flying home on the jet. It was very quiet. And all I could do was say to myself, ugh, now we're going to have to kick their ass. And you know, it took us 10 years. But eventually, we drove Blockbuster into bankruptcy. Now, I tell you this story not to brag, but because in some ways, it's a very interesting tale. On one hand, it's inspiring that just a handful of people with a crazy idea and some persistence could take down a $6 billion corporation. But the story's got a very different meaning if you are the $6 billion corporation. Because what it means is, you never know where your next threat's coming from. What it means is that you have to disrupt yourself before someone disrupts you for you. Thanks for watching. And if you liked what you saw, I'd love you to subscribe. And if you want to be notified of my future releases, well, you know the drill. Just hit the bell.